Alrighty, so we're going to start with installing Windows Server 2019. I'm doing it on a virtual machine. You can do this on a physical machine. You can do it type of V. I'm using VMware. Doesn't really matter if you're doing a virtual machine. Just set it up something similar to this and you should be good. Right, so create new. Give it a name. This is going to be my domain controller. So, right, that's good. Windows. So, 2019. I'm going to enable this. And, right. So we want to select our storage. We've got this one for free. Right. Now give it as much as you can afford to give it. Um, I only have 20 gigabytes of host memory. So I kind of don't want to do too much some things that are going to come in later tutorials i would put normally on a separate server environment just to you know say if one goes down the whole lot doesn't go down with it uh, so normally i would say give it a roundabout <clears throat> in between four and six gigabytes but because this one in particular is going to be hosting uh, eventually it's going to be my remote desktop gateway it's going to be dhcp dns active directory and it's probably going to run iis on there as well so I will want at least eight gigabytes on there. All right, now thin provision your disk. So that will only use, like say, you only need 50 gigabytes. You'll only use 50 gigabytes of physical space. But Windows will think you've got 90 or any OS will and technically you have got that space you can build up to it later but yeah just go thin provision uh, most of these aren't really applicable for what we're doing so it doesn't really matter um, right I will pick data store ISO we have got right for our virtual video card let's give it a little bit of memory okay. and then VM options uh, right VMware tools yeah this one synchronize guest time with post uh, actually I would recommend against doing this if you've got a setup like me so I've got uh, VMware ESXi running on a blade server um, ESXi likes to keep its time in UTC there is a way that you can change it but it's just not worth the effort I will just set my time zones manually right boot options just make sure you got EFI enabled and Right. these all look pretty good next ready to complete finish 
our virtual machine is waiting deployment. All right, so we can hit that. Power on. I'm gonna have to do a reset because I'll never get this console up quick enough. And little disclaimer. I'm going to try to not swear too much, but as you can see, my mouse is just, it's bullshit. So yeah, if I drop a few C-bombs here and there, I do apologize. All right. So let's just get that to full screen now. <clears throat> installation of a server as with any operating system generally involves um, a bit of waiting so we don't have many options so let's just go with whatever it gives us All right so I will either cut chunks of video out because there's nothing important there or I'll just speed them up uh, I haven't decided yet now this one we're not installing in a data center so we don't need a data center version up until server 2019 you used to be able to if you accidentally installed standard, you used to be able to, using PowerShell, download the desktop experience. Not the case anymore. So just make sure you select that because you'll have to install the OS again if you don't. Uh, just accept terms get custom you can mess around with partitions and this and that if you want but windows will just go right ahead and do whatever the hell it likes anyway when it comes to installing those other partitions that are hidden from the file explorer uh, just tick on that if you've got more drives just make sure that you've got the correct drive before you go and do this you just hit next let windows create its own partitions right now this is one of those waiting periods so I, I don't have anything of value to add at this point. All we can do is wait for this to install. So I'll just speed this up. Right, so there we go on that first part. <clears throat> this is the built-in admin account, which we're going to disable later for security reasons. All right, so just give it a password. doesn't matter what because it will not be an active account soon enough. Uh, let's see. Roll up delete. Log in.
Alright, I'm just wait for a few things to start up. First thing we want to do, besides get this damn server up to date with all the latest security patches, etc. Right. Terrible spelling, but I do have all these freaking windows popping up, stealing focus. This is why we get rid of Internet Explorer. All right, but we need to add all of these just to be able to function as a server, basically. Why is that abomination? Right. Well, while that's installing, do a couple of things. So let's go. Let's get this to a bit of a better resolution. Uh, depending on what you've installed it on, you may or may not be able to go 1080. But uh, because I like to use uh, what you call it, VMware in the console. I definitely want to be at a readable resolution. Yeah. Uh, let's just unpick that as well. All right. Cool. So, server manager. This is basically where you can look at a glance and see where something's gone wrong. Now there's two services that are flagged. One stop, start pending. They're not that big a deal. Uh, see my time is way off as well. Um, okay, Time zone. Yeah. You can uh you can look up what your time zone is called here, right? We're just updating 
all the knowledge base for PowerShell at the moment and all the modules that are installed. This one's pretty important too. If you're using VMware, make sure you install VMware tools. Now, in most cases, you're only going to need typical. If you're planning on installing as part of like a vSphere setup, you'll want complete uh, or custom. Uh, basically, if you know what you're doing with them, you probably wouldn't be here listening to me that that's the hard truth of it um if you don't know what to do with them then just stick with typical right, and there you go that is way shooting back again so uh, right, so let's see. We can uh, hit examples as well. It'll give you some time zone examples of how you can use this app. Basically, you want to find what your time zone ID is. So you can do that with this command. And then you can just search through. I already know mine. So we're going by ID. Now you might, you probably could set it by any one of these. Yeah. 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 All right, there we go. And my time just changed. All right, now you can come over to adjust the time. All right, you can ignore that. All right, cool. Automatically set. I actually prefer this one. Cool. But now we've got our time synchronized with the server rather than the host, because like I said, VMware host always seems to revert back to UTC and then you reboot your server, time's out, try to log in, it's going to basically tell you that you can't because the times are too different. And you've got a choice where you can either sync your endpoint time with your domain controller time and have that always off. It would just always be, oh, hey, if you live in UTC time zone, then cool. Yeah, you'll have the correct time. Otherwise, this is how you do it. Uh, right. 
come up to add roles and features we are going to uh, we want role based or feature based installation all right select the server all right yeah it's always a good time to um rename the server there is so many ways you can get to it this is just my way it's going i type that env to bring up this and you just go change and uh, this is going to be It's my dang domain controller. Uh, I just like to put the domain in there. Right, restart later. Not going to reflect there because it's still named this, but this will update eventually. Right. Uh, what we want to also do. We've got a dynamic IP so whatever your whatever your network range is uh, just pick an empty slot so I know I know my 240 range is empty. So I'm going to 240. This will probably get changed again at some point. Now, for now, I'm just going to use my gateway. as the DNS server or my router All right. just wait for that yeah cool there we go um I will cover I will cover IPv4 addressing Double click again. Right, so we want ADDS. Uh, we are going to put Microsoft 365 directory sync into this. So we will also want to add this one. Right. At some point, we're going to set up DHCP and DNS. I'll come and do those after. They're no big deal. Uh, same with remote desktop and web server IIS. For now, we just want these two. Uh, it doesn't hurt to add. Uh, .NET support and uh, what else have we got? Yeah, all that stuff can come later. Uh, just check that we have PowerShell. Yeah, cool. So you don't want PowerShell 2.0 anymore. It's it's very obsolete. <clears throat> right. ADDS. Yeah. Cool. And tell it to restart. Right. So. Now we just wait again. 
Uh, there's nothing that I can really add here because we're just waiting. So I'm going to take a quick break and I will either speed this bit up or chop it out. Okay, so it looks like that was actually quicker than I thought. Uh, right, so now what we want to do, promote this server to a domain controller. Uh, we want to add a new forest because we're starting from scratch. And... I just like to have it yelling at me because I have spent a lot of time yelling at it. Uh, you want the highest functional level you can, which is currently Windows Server 2016. All right. Uh, yep. Yeah. Now, password, DSRM password, you don't want it to be something that's insecure. You also don't want it to be something randomly generated that's a pain to type. And you also don't want it to be something you're going to forget. So... Make sure you pick something that you'll remember. Right. Looks like it's going to make us create DNS right now as well. Um, Uh, actually, I haven't installed DNS, but that's cool because we can come and set that up later. Uh, NetBIOS name. Uh, I have to for this. Yep. Okay, so these, you can change them if you really, really want to. Doesn't matter. Um, a lot of these are becoming less and less applicable in today's environment. Use Sysvol and, you know, like all of these 
I mean, these, these are handy because that's where your logs get stored. But your sysvol folder, uh, that's generally where you would put things like logon scripts. So when you've got a device that's joined to your domain authenticating through the on-premises server, which is this that we're setting up now. Uh, that's where all your logon scripts will be. And it, it's basically the authority of the entire network resides in there. Like, Anything that's in there has full authority to run if you've set it up correctly. But yeah. Uh, right. Review options. Looks good. Yeah, right. So we need a reboot. And we need to rerun the pre rec check. Right. So, cool, let's just reboot it and we'll get that name change while we're at it. And yeah, we need to come back later to do that anyway. All right, give it a quick reboot. And my tools is installed, so we're good. And like the main reason, too, you want. Uh, VMware tools installed is just so you've got better integration between uh, everything that's on like the hardware side of your virtual machine host. It's just so everything can be integrated nicely into your guest. Right, so this will take a little while to load up. It's starting to populate. Uh, they're on delayed start, so they're okay. Right, post appointment config for me. Promote to a domain controller. Right, so just what we did before. Uh, I can go through it much quicker because I won't have to explain anything.
Notice that we've now got our domain. So, first thing we want to do, we don't have to worry about any services or anything just yet. Active Directory users and computers. <clears throat> All right, so basically, what you want to do here. Just set up your forest. So we've got all these that come down. Create new organizational unit or OU from here on out. And we want to create more OUs. Uh, we want, um, I'm just going to call it devices because we're going to enable device right back later. Uh, always make sure that's ticked as well because then you have to physically come in, edit it, untick that to be able to delete something it stops you from accidentally deleting the wrong thing yeah. you generally wouldn't want to delete something from in here anyway it's going to go users right under users we'll create more admins So if you ever go disable any accounts, you can do it from there. All right, so these ones will be synced to Microsoft 365 and right. and these will be your disabled users from Microsoft 365 that you're going to archive All right so before we even get into how to archive that, we have a bit more set up to do. We have to update our AD schemas. Uh, that's another lesson. Uh, right, this should do it for now. Uh, and we want another one here as well. This is where we'll put all our security groups um, uh, under here. We have folder groups so later on when we set up a file server for local use which will be on our uh, terminal server which we're setting up later that's basically how you separate 
all those users out. Uh, right, we want another one as well. Right. Put it under devices, sorry. Devices. Good do it for now. Um, admins create a new user. Good set that. Right. Uh, he's not an admin yet, just because we call him an admin. What to? What to do this as well? The advanced features. That adds all of these extra things like the attribute editor, which comes into play later. Member of, you want to add enterprise domain. Let's just go. Just search for all the groups. Right. So, domain admins and enterprise admins have full control over everything. Um, if you just wanted to create an administrator that can only deal with accounts, your account operators. Want to yeah. put schema admins actually? That's the only one because everything else is covered under these two. Whatever is not covered under that is covered under that, but for later on we're going to need both of those and you, you can't just add them in a group and then put that user in that group because the ad sync just won't work that way and right we just want one more user. And this is just a regular user account. And that pretty much wraps up this lesson. Uh, next, we'll go into AD Sync. Uh, if you haven't already, oh, actually, I'm forgetting one thing, so I will cover that before I go. But, um, if you haven't already, go to 
Microsoft 365 E5 Dev Trial. All right, come over to here and join. Get yourself your 365 tenant and you, know, you just set that up. Uh, you can either go the instant sandbox or you can just have a blank one. I chose the blank one because I couldn't be bothered deleting everything that I didn't want. But you may not know what you want just yet. So just stick with the developer instant sandbox, get it straight away. That's all good. All right. Now what we need to do as well, sign out. All right. Sign in as our admin. Want this? I'll just pin it. Get rid of that. And come to here. And this is all the user accounts. They're going to show as local users on the domain controller because technically they are. Uh, all right, we go Linux Then we come to built-in users. Yeah, so that's disabled. We could also just disable it here. But sometimes you can't always find that account because someone may have moved it. I just like to do that. Right, that concludes our lesson this time for sure. Um, as you can see, everything is running, all the services have started properly. Uh, we've got, yeah, so that's all prepared for the next lesson. Alrighty, I'll see you then.